<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kilohertz, and in today's video, I'm featuring this beauty. It's a 1966 W111 S-Class Coupe. Now this is a car that I've known about for a good couple of years and I have shared the odd picture or two on the forums. However, these are always pre-YouTube days and I've never actually made the film on it. So Andy, the owner, has kindly allowed me to feature this today where I'm going to show you all the different details and so on. And also, he's going to be discussing how he acquired the car, what kind of maintenance he's had to do and all the other bits and pieces of its history. So before all that, what is the W111 Coupe? Back in the late 1950s, Mercedes produced a range of flagship models with the internal model code W111. Now these included both a four-door saloon as well as a two-door coupe and a cabriolet model as well. Their contemporary look at the time, designed by Paul Brock, mirrored the American-style tail fins which were all the rage and also provided them these models with the nickname Heckflosser, which is German for fin tail. The W111 was being counted on by Mercedes to push the company and its fortunes forward, replacing the now slightly dated Ponton model, and the Ponton had been responsible for the majority of the company's fortunes in the early years after the war. Now for the first time in automotive history, a major part of these new car's designs were designed around not only passenger comfort, but also safety. The W111 pioneered front and rear energy absorbing crumple zones. Production of the model started in 1960, with the convertible arriving six months later. So I'm here with Andy, the owner. Welcome to the channel. Hi Carl, you're right. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just going into a little yeah, bit no, of okay, so, the history of the car, okay. where you got it from. Alright, so when I was a kid sort of thing, you know how you see these cars, they turn up on the street and you think, oh, that's really a fantastic machine. And then you realise what it was you thought about years ago. And then you think, well, why shouldn't I get one of those cars? So I, I endeavoured to buy one, which was a complete mistake because I just bought the first one that came along. It was as rotten as a pair and I spent about two years with a, a welder trying to get it all welded up. And when did you actually buy this? How long I bought that. Car? I've had this car for, since 1996. Right? Wow. It's been on the road since 1996. So that's 24 years now, isn't it? So, But wow, yeah. prior to that, I was trying to restore another car. Uh, a friend of mine suggested that I went to an auction that where this car hadn't sold and uh, have a look at it and I said well you know I've got a car I don't really want another one do I? I'm restoring one so and why would I want to yes so, 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 so I decided yeah I've got to go and have a look at it so I get to the car and I have a look in the boot which we'll show you later and I'm thinking there's had a cut and shut it's so good on the back it's so much right with the car whereas my car was there was so much wrong with it so I just basically found the owner and we did a deal and I bought it there and then so I was really happy that the fact that I'd now got two cars and I could use one car as a donor and one car which was this one as the as the the car that was going to have everything right about it that wasn't right about it in the first place so, so the ISO back then were they quite easy to get hold of they were obviously in bad state back then but were they a lot more common than they are no nowadays? they're no more common net now than they were then so i mean they're, they're just not a common car and they, the, the fact you had two of them that's that's quite, that's quite rare yeah, yeah that was quite rare in itself i mean the, the parts for those cars were like hen's teeth for a start yeah. extraordinarily expensive for instance if you wanted to buy a set of bumpers for that car they're three thousand pounds that's in 1996 they're three thousand pounds that's three thousand wow. at the front and three thousand at the back so that's how rare the parts were to get hold of it in those days and still now obviously so everything about the car the lights you know the dash the chrome everything about it is huge money it was huge money when they were cut but when this car was on the market this car was more money than a rolls royce yeah yeah, it's, yeah. You remember you telling me yeah. That here on the way here so that's amazing to think now how different sort of um, mercedes has become a mass produced brand yeah what, yeah um was rolls royce is yeah, stuck yeah. at the yeah, top yeah. of this game yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can just see that you can tell that the price of this car when it was new i mean well look at it i mean for what 54 years yeah it's now? 54 years i mean you look at this this chrome right it's chrome on brass it's not chrome on steel you know everything about this car is solid you know it's, you can it's, just hear that by tapping well it's you just you listen to these, listen though. to the door i mean look at look, look and listen to the door it's 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 cast aluminium with a steel skin so you know, it's like, it's, it's solid. If you mind telling me about, a little bit about the design. Okay, well the designer of this car was Paul Brock. 
He was, a, he was a design legend. He is a design legend. He designed, all, he was worked for BMW after he worked for Mercedes-Benz. He was head of design for 10 years. He designed the Pagoda Roof Mercedes sports car, you know, the one with the dish. Yep. He designed the 114, which is an aftermarket uh, car from this one. He designed this 111 Coupe, which is probably his swan song. I think everybody recognises that this car was, was such a, a stylish, stylish car, such a ahead of its time car, such a, a beautiful car. He designed it with, as a pillarless coupe. Coupe. So you know when the windows come down, you know you've got a whole area of, of this is not it's just, it, it's it's amazing design. Well, I mean you even get that on some of the new models now, but that, that's just it's just so sleek and timeless. So you've got uh, you've got that going on, you know. So it's just it's just phenomenal. I and mean, everything about this car, the design, you know, even on the quarter light here, it's just replicated on the interior. You know, the, this thing, this this is a mechanical. You know, it's it's on a it's, it's incredible it's and the age of it and it still works it's, it's, perfect. It's absolutely perfect, yeah. I mean everything about it is it's just so solid, you know, the, the, the door handle, the door opening, you know, the chrome on here, the chrome on there. It so just goes on and, and on and on. It's modern cars and you see all this. I mean even my own CLS has got the similar plate here. But my, on mine it's really cheap metal, but this is really solid. Yeah, no, it's that. just get, again, it's just yeah. everything about it. You know, the dashboard, it took me three days to replace that dashboard, right? It, it's, it's so intricate. Every nut, every screw, sorry, every screw is machine turned. It's not a like a, a self-tapper like you would still get in a Rolls Royce, like you're still getting British Lane, like you're still getting any, mostly any British car. This is, this is designed to have screws fitted to that car. There's a, there's a screw in here that takes this piece of trim that is applicable to the entire car. There's only one screw, there's one screw this side, one screw the other side. Wow. There's two screws of this car that are completely original and they don't fit anything else. That's how the level, I mean, they were showing off when they built this car. The only person that could afford this, let's face it, was a pop star. You know, they had to have zoodles of money. You know, they had to have money coming out of their ears to think about buying a car. I mean, if you, did, if you went past the price of a Rolls Royce, in those days, which would have bought you a couple of houses, probably, you know, and you go above that with a level, and they were just basically, as I say, they were showing off. They were showing off their engineering. Well, speaking about um, celebrity owners, you said that this at once was owned by a celebrity chef? Yeah, no, this was the one back in the day. I mean, there have been celebrity chefs as soon, since they've had, you know, movies, haven't they? So this guy was called Anton Moserman. He was a, a celebrity chef. He's a French guy. He was a celebrity sh chef of his time. And he, he was, owned this actual He actually owned this car. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, and I, I actually sent some photographs of the car when I'd finished it to him and his secretary wrote back and said, no, Mr. Moserman is not interested in buying any cars at this present moment. Oh, so, so she, she thought, yeah, she thought I was thinking of, he wanted to buy a car from me. So, so he was the original owner? I believe so. I okay. couldn't quote me on that, but I believe he, he was. Because as I say, you know, you need to have serious money. Well, what's that guy's name on television who does it? The, the, um, the F bursts, you know, they want, can't stop saying F every two minutes. What's his name? Oh, uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, well, he's got to have his sort of money. He drives around in a couple of Ferraris, yeah, doesn't exactly, he? Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Shut it! This is the deal. Yeah. This is the deal. Okay, a lot classy about them, both the cars and the chef. Yeah, a little bit more classy <laughs> than Gordon Ramsay, really. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're now around at the, the front of the car, and here's the beast. So you mind just talking me through briefly the uh, engine? Well, you basically, as I said, you've got a, a, a third generation fuel injection system. That means that eat, this, this is a sophisticated fuel injection system. It's third generation. It's not just straight off the, out of the blocks. It's individually fed to each cylinder. So pretty much perfected it by then? By then, that was as good as it was going to get. It's manual. Uh, it's a mechanical fuel pump, sorry. So it's not, it's not electronic. So, you know, everything about that is like a jewel. It's like a diamond, okay. yeah? So that thing in there does not go wrong. If it does, God help us, because, you know, you've got to find someone who knows what they're talking about. The <laughs> fact of the matter is that these cars were so sophisticated in their time that they, mechanics in England couldn't deal with it. So that they, 
Mercedes-Benz retrofitted carburetors to this engine to make it so that mechanics could repair it and it re ruined it because they just drank petrol, they lost the performance and they lost the... I didn't know that, so yeah, basically it's just that because otherwise it was a long trip back to Germany. Yeah, I guess. couldn't <laughs> fix it. No one could fix it. The technicians in England were just not able to do wow, that. It's so far ahead of its so time. So far ahead of its time, yeah. So yeah. Obviously, being it's getting on for what 54 years old, we said there's going to have been some teething trouble through the year. What kind of issues have you had mechanically? Mechanically, zero, absolutely none. Okay, so you've had this car since 96. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you had to do a fair bit of body work on it. I, I mean, they're, they're not, they mm. are, you know, they do have faults, but so rust is the, the biggest. Yeah, concern. the biggest issue with these cars would have been the rust, but I actually got a car that was virtually rust free. I just had to take all the blemishes out. Uh, it's been completely resprayed, obviously. I, I found a metal worker who was, who's par excellence. He was a brilliant, brilliant engineer in his own right. He did everything to the car that needed to be done prior to having it resprayed. Do you want me to tell you about the roof? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so for my, my original car, I had a full Webasto sunshine roof. I hate Webasto yeah. sunshine roofs. And I love the coupe shape with yeah. this roof. And I think that the Webasto sunshine roof ruined it. So I cut it off, the original car, and I cut this one down. Yeah. And I put that roof, or he did, he put that roof on this car. And when was that? Was that back in 96? Or that was in 96 when I restored 96. it. Wow. And he got it so right. There is a piece of wood on here, a piece okay. of trim on the inside that's got three screws and they line up when you put the piece of wood in. Yep. He got it so well that when I put the piece of wood on, even though the, the, the entire roof had been cut from the A-frame to the C-post, it fitted. The bits wow. of wood went in. He was such a good engineer. Wow. And I spent, I actually spent, when I got everything back, the chrome, the wheels, everything that was needed to be replaced, the dash, everything like that, it took me, I think I was in the shed, or in my garage rather, so about 27 days out of 31, I, and that was a 12 hour day. Wow. So I spent 27 days underneath, upside down. I actually lost my vision because I spent so much time staring at tiny little details. I mean, this trim here. Well, let, let's be honest, you put all that effort in and here we are, what, getting 25 years later. The car, and this the looks car. Like it rolled off the, yeah, the production yeah, line no, yesterday. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a credit to your Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's a credit to their there. engineering, you know, in as much as if you didn't put this piece, I can see this piece of chrome trim, it fits. There's no gap there. If you didn't get it to fit, it would look dreadful. You know, it's the same with this. It ends at the right place on that curve. It's just, you have to get it exactly right. So the, the amount of work that went into it originally, I had to replicate that. And it, was, it wasn't easy, I have to say, but it was worth it. It was well, well worth it, yeah. So you mentioned about the boot. Yeah, no, further detail on the boot. I mean, this boot is enormous, it's ginormous. You, just, you could lie in there virtually. It's just, it just <laughs> it's goes like on forever. Park. Yeah, no, it's just ridiculous. I it's mean, an idea of scale. This is, of course, is a full-size wheel. Yeah, yeah. And just look at that. It's yeah, no, absolutely it's, fantastic. It goes, back for, it goes back forever. And look at this. There's no rust or anything. No, is this was, the original label yeah, as well? Yeah, this, was the, this was the thing about the car. You know, when I looked in here, I thought, this has had a cut and shut. You know, it's so good in there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, because I guess with these sort of cars, you can actually see all the body work whereas now it's not hidden behind That's the right, yeah, you can one. see what you're buying. The way you have to shut it is with your elbow. It's, it's <laughs> so you don't put your way. finger marks on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the exhaust, let's listen to the exhaust. Okay, let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. And just before you do that, I just yeah. need to point out that the, the, if am I correct, the, yeah, the fill, in case yeah. you haven't seen this. Here's another the, feature, um, yeah, this is how you fill it up. So you, look at that. So, sweet, yeah. Wow, look, I didn't, I didn't know about that. So it just wedges in there, and then that's, that's extraordinary. Yeah, it helps you obviously. See, it's all this over-engineering. Yeah, no, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. Okay, well, I think it's time, if you wouldn't mind, if you'd take us around the block and we'll get an onboard footage, see what it's like to drive. <laughs> um, apparently, it can be a little bit tail-happy, so I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, but it, it will, you can't, you won't lose the car.
Okay, so well, yeah, the car really handles very well. Uh, it's such a heavy car, it's such a low down car that you can you can actually spin it round and round about. I'll give you a sort of a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't do it as a learner. <laughs> Um, I just find it incredible that a car that this age can handle like that. But this is the most, this is the, this is kind of the strange thing about the car. Like it's a vintage car now, I guess you can qualify. But it doesn't feel older. Okay, the, the sound is a bit louder than maybe other cars, but it still feels robust. It's roadworthy. It's handling fine, isn't it? It's 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 really quite. Yeah, it's very sophisticated. I mean, let's not let's not doubt that. Let's not doubt that. It's it's a. Uh, it's a modern car. It's a modern car. You know, it's an old car, but it's a modern car. It's, yeah. it's an S-Class Mercedes. So everything about it is, you know, up to the S-Class standard. You know, it's an SE Mercedes, SE 250 SE. So that's that's basically yeah. their history. Their their. Um, what's the word? It's it was the flagship model, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was the flagship. Model. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So as we get to the end of this video. One area I haven't shown you is anything of the interior. Now it's fully original and unrestored, something which I gives it a certain charm. The, the wood and leather give it that classic old car smell. Okay, so let's go through the safety features on the car. So first of all, this is one of the first production models ever to feature front and rear crumple zones. And the idea behind that is just to absorb some of the energy in a crash. Uh, standard on all cars now, but this was pioneering back in the day. This is the first car that had it. Added to which, you've got, it may sound kind of trivial and um, primitive now, but padding on the dashboard. So if you face, if you do hit it, I guess it might be the difference between getting knocked unconscious and then instead just having a broken nose, who knows? And you've got it, of course, on the steering wheel here. Yeah, there's no seat belts in this or back headrest. Being 1966 but uh, it's just staggering i mean it does feel like a tank i guess compared to modern cars it wouldn't stand up too well but it, it does feel st solid so i'm going to show you something hilarious All right for the screen washer there's a little foot pump just down here it's kind of a little nipple you can see so what happens is you put your foot on there and water will jet out on the windscreen so if i just give it a go now There you go, you can just see it squirting out. <laughs> Such a simple solution, rather than having a mechanical or electrical pump. They could do without a new car, so I mean, the amount of weight that we lug around with all these motors and so on, something as simple as that, it just works. It's still working, you know, 50 odd years later. So that brings us to the end of this video. Now I must say a massive thanks to Andy for letting me feature his car on my channel. Now, if you have an equally interesting or quirky Mercedes, it doesn't necessarily have to be an old model that you like featuring on the channel, please get in touch. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel grow. And if you haven't done already, consider clicking on that subscribe button so you're notified as soon as I upload new videos and content. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.